Mike, congratulations. Obviously, a very, very impressive performance. Can you talk first, before we get to the physical aspect of it, just emotionally, mentally, how important a victory was for you tonight? Dude, this was, uh, first and foremost, I will say, I, I was battling a lot of mental things today. Um, you know, this was my first win since April 2016. On top of the fact it's been a very tumultuous year for me. Um, just a lot of crazy stuff going on. So, for me to be able to cap it off with a win, uh, it, it was imperative, you know what I mean? And it's not just for my career. It was just for my quality of life, you know what I mean? I really needed this win on so many levels. My family needed it. My team needed it. And um, here I am. I get to sit before you guys a winner. It's good to be back. All week long, you talked about how good you felt. You looked a lot better not trying to cut down. But you got in there because you said, I'm not sure what it's going to feel like. I, you know, it's a little, a little, I guess. I mean, what did the strength feel like, you know, a bigger weight class? And then, of course, you not having that weight cut behind you. I know I made I know I made a few mistakes in the first round. He had a he had a, a pretty tight arm bar, but I will say there was a difference between you know when I fought at fifty five and I got caught in bad positions, it, I'd, I'd get a lot more frantic. Whereas tonight I was able to really think my way through a lot, out of a lot of situations and be. I I knew I was right about one thing. I knew I'd be able to be a much more cerebral fighter in there, and I was able to make a lot of decisions on the fly. Uh, it just took me a round to adjust, but I've shown time and time again in my career, I get through the first round and. You know, I, I just pretty much take over from there. But I felt really good, man. And the crazy thing is, is you know, my last two fights before this, they, they've been checking, they check our weights now before we fight. When I fought Kevin Lee, I was 186 pounds on fight night. When I fought Pettis, I was 185 pounds on fight night. Tonight, I was 188. So it, with that being said, I think the trend now is go up a weight class. <laughs> no doubt. And afterwards, I you said Neil Magny was the fight you won next. Why, why is that something that makes sense to you? It's not a stylistic thing. I, I'm here to be a champion. I'm not here to be just another guy on the roster. I'm here to be a world champion. I truly believe that I will have a 12-pound gold UFC belt around my waist, and i got to start at the bottom of the top 15. You know, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't, haven't totally studied the landscape of the top 15 of welterweight like I do. I know lightweight like the back of my hand, but, you know, I'm assuming Neil Magny's in the bottom half of the top 15, you know, summer probably around 15, 14, 13. So I'm just looking to climb the ladder again. You know, I'm here. I'm here to be a contender. I think I showed that tonight. Um, you know, I know Carlos has been on a skid, but it, he's still a tough competitor. And, you know, I went out there and did something no one else has done. You haven't seen that in the UFC. I'm finally able to – I have a whole bag of tricks I haven't got to show. I've just showed everybody I got a rear naked choke. You know what I mean? And uh, I got a whole bag of tricks I'm ready to showcase now. What's it feel like to beat up your hero? I wouldn't say I beat him up. I mean, the guy, he landed a few shots on me. Um, he had me in a pretty tight arm bar. You know, I'd be a liar if I said it was hard. It makes it easier to go out there and compete against the guy you have a lot of respect for. It makes it easy to prepare. You know, when you're a fan of a fighter, it's because you acknowledge their skills. You acknowledge where they're good. You acknowledge their attributes. You know what I mean? So it, it makes it easy to train for a guy that you've been a fan of because you know how dangerous he is. The guy uses all eight of his limbs in terms of striking. He's dangerous from his back. He throws a lot of elbows. I, I, I was pretty mindful of that tonight, almost too mindful. I think it kind of got me to make a few mistakes, me thinking that he was kind of winding up to throw some elbows from bottom. Um, you know, but, but uh, I got a ton. Of, I still have a ton of respect for the guy, man. I can't reiterate that enough. Uh, I'm not just some guy saying that because I'm fighting a guy. You know, I'm, I'm in a lower generation than, than he is, so I'm not just some guy saying, oh, I have a ton of respect for him because that's like the, the cliche thing to say, but I really mean it. You know what I mean? I, I I think the hell, I think the world of the guy, and uh, you know, it, it wasn't hard for me to go out there and get the job done against him. You kind of had the look of awe on your face right after the fight ended, like the first second. Was that more of like you're finally back on the winning track, or was it like, holy shit, I just beat my hero? It, it's a it's a mix of of a few things there. I mean, I've been saying it throughout my career that it was it was imperative for me after the Ultimate Fighter. I need to beat a guy that I grew up watching. I need to get beat a guy I've been a fan of. You know, and the first time I got to do that was against Jim Miller. After I beat Jim Miller, I really felt like inside, mentally, I ascended. Like, okay, I am as good as these guys. Now it was like, okay, I got to beat a former world champion. And there's not a lot of those guys in the UFC. There's not a lot of guys that have been title, title holders, former title holders that are in the UFC. So getting to beat somebody that at some point in their career has what I'm, you know, striving to achieve, to, to accomplish, it was... Uh, you know, it was that on top of the fact that I haven't won in two and a half years. It's that on top of the fact that this has been the roughest year of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, and uh, 
just finally getting the win. Just right, it, just two days left of 2018, I, I was finally able to hit a high point. It was really needed. I'm wondering too if after your fight, I mean, you had a lot going on, but did you see Amanda's performance? It was so quick right after yours, and, and if so, what was your thought on that? Oh, dude, yeah, I was I was doing an interview, and then the guy's like, "Hold on." Amanda just dropped Cyborg. We all just stopped. We were doing watching the TV, and I'm, man, I think that it, it, that was incredible for one. For two, that's another fighter that went up a weight class. You know what I mean? That's I think we're starting to see a, a new trend in the sport. You know what I mean? There was a point in the sport for people that have been that have watched mixed martial arts for a long time. There was a point where cut the most weight, be the biggest guy in your weight class. That was a trend at one point. You know what I mean? I was part of that generation. Whereas now it's like. Okay, be the healthier, be the healthier fighter, be the smarter fighter. Um, but yeah, congrats to Amanda Nunes. What a what a feather in her cap for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Hey Mike, congrats on the win, of course. Thank you. So as you mentioned, you have a lot of respect for Carlos Connor. I think everyone in this room does. But now he's got five straight losses, and obviously you you and he have two different careers, but do you think he should continue fighting? Do you feel like his heart is in it like it used to be? Nobody has the right to tell a fighter, you know, especially anybody in this room. That's that's amongst him and his family and his teammates. I have no business saying that. Carlos Condit still has a tool bag that he could go out and beat anybody on any given night. It just so happens he had to fight me tonight, and I was, I was very, very well prepared. You know what I mean? This wasn't like he just went out and lost to some chump. He just went out and lost to a guy. I mean, it... it if it had I had not had my mishap with Kevin Lee, I would have been fighting Tony Ferguson for the title. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not some scrub. You know, I'm, I've been on the brink of, of title fights. You know what I mean? I'm a tough guy. So, uh, you know, that's amongst him and his family and his team. Um, you know, and, but if, if that is, if that is, I don't want to be the guy that, that that he ends his career off of. I would like to have it be someone else. I don't want it to be me. Um, but if, if this is the end, I mean, fucking what a ride he's had, dude. The guy, two two major world titles across two organizations. He's competed against some of the best in the world. Um, I hope this isn't it for him. And speaking of titles, you're, not, you're now in your new division. We are, Most of us here expect you to be ranked after this. How do you feel about the title picture? Because it seems a little unclear about who's fighting who, uh, if Woodley's going to fight Covington or if Usman's in the picture. I like the title picture here better than, than Lightweight. Oh, yeah. Light, lightweight is just, you want to talk about a cluster. You have Ferguson, who's the interim champ. You got Khabib, who's undoubtedly the undisputed champ across the board. You got Connor, who could jump in and get the title fight if he wants it anytime. You know what I mean? Dustin Poirier sitting in the fringes with, in my opinion, the guy has the best winning streak in the UFC right now in terms of the resume. I mean, Dustin Poirier's win streak is phenomenal. Um, you know, there's a lot of X factors in that division where I'd rather be at 170 where there's just three guys. You know what I mean? It's one, t one, one champion, uh, uh, one interim champion, and then Usman. You know what I mean? Pretty, pretty easy picture. By the time I work my way to the top, that'll all be sorted out. So I'd rather be in this, in this, in this clusterfuck than that one. Pardon my language. Great answer. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mike. Hey. When you when you say you, you need to be the more cerebral fighter at 170, what does that mean exactly? I just – this goes back to a, an interview of – an article of Anthony Smith's I saw where he's talking about how he felt in his fights at 185 pounds. And I could totally relate to it. He's talking about how when you go through that hard cut and you go compete, you're just kind of in a fog. You just – your best shot at winning is really just – putting the gas pedal to the floor, going for it and hoping for the best. And when I was in there tonight, I was, it, when you go through a hard weight cut, you're draining fluids from every part of your body, including up top. You know what I mean? So I only had to cut a pound the day of weigh-ins. I didn't have to totally drain my body. I didn't look, I mean, if you saw the way I looked at weigh-ins when I fought Pettis, you know what I mean? That's, that, that's complete total dehydration. I didn't have to put my body through that. I didn't have to put my brain through that. So when I got in there tonight, I was literally making decisions. Like I, I was able to like, I can compete, I can maintain a high pace, but I can make decisions about what I want to do. I can make decisions on how I'm going to escape submissions of, you know, it, it, that's, that's being a cerebral fighter. And it's hard to be a cerebral fighter when you, you're totally dehydrating yourself and then giving yourself, you know, you're not giving yourself great odds at winning. You know, I've done it through my career, but I, you know, that was, uh, 
that, that, that wasn't smart fighting. That was me just like, hey, my best shot at winning is I just kind of dump the gas tank and hope I catch this guy. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, being cerebral in there means being able to make decisions on the fly, no matter what the pace of the fight is. Do you, do you wish you went up sooner? Yes, I do wish I went up sooner. But thankfully, I just turned 31 this month. I'm in the prime of my career. I haven't taken too much damage. I haven't been in a ton of wars. We train really smart back home at Sikh Jitsu. I'm not in a lot of gym wars. My body's very, at 31 years old and, and almost 11 years in the sport, um, you know, I haven't taken a ton of damage. Knock on wood, I haven't had a ton of, I haven't had any major surgeries. Um, I'm definitely in the best, I'm in the best, I'm in my prime. This is my prime. I wish I would have done this sooner, but I'm just glad I did it now. And uh, I'm really looking forward to 2019. And just last thing, you said this is the toughest year of your life. What were you referring to? What the, the outside yeah. of the cage stuff, the McGregor just, style? Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, you already know. It's it's it goes all the way back to, you know, starting starting 2018 with a loss with the Kevin Lee thing. 223, 226. You know what I mean? It it was tough. You know what I mean? And it was, if one thing's for sure, I I showed my heart tonight. You know what I mean? I was able to overcome a lot of shit. I, nobody nobody's had the. Nobody's had the plate that I've had. Nobody's had to open the social media accounts and see all the fucking shit I, I have to read every day, the shit that my family has to read every day. Nobody has to deal with that on an everyday basis. And to be able to overcome everything that I've gone through this year and everything I still have to deal with on a regular basis, rise to the occasion and get a win, uh, I needed it. My family needed it. And uh, I'm very thankful. And I love my mom. She's in the back. Thank you.